Welcome back, guys. Stop talking roll episode 183, your number one show for Jiu Jitsu analysis on YouTube today. We have uh, Dan and Zach going on a journey, an adventure. I think I need to stay on this side the whole time. So, might be looking the wrong way, but immediately looking into a knee slice, good knee shield, keeping him at bay, Zach. Um, you could throw in a daily heave hook right here. Yeah, switch. Uh, that's an option. So, a daily heave hook. Um, this is probably a good, better visual of it. Yeah, so basically you grab the ankle with your outside arm, just like so. I know you have two hands on it right now. Um, and what you could do is you just lace your foot. Instead of it being here, you put the instep of your foot through the middle. So that's daily heave guard. Um, you don't have to lace your leg through. As long as you bring your leg down a little bit, you're going to angle off slightly in this direction. And um, guys, I, I used to have a hard time with this this uh, guard because of my hips. And one of the things that I learned from uh, Evan out in Hawaii, shout out Evan Asaki, Asaki Jiu Jitsu on Kauai. Um, one, of the thing I, one of the things I learned from those guys is uh, if you're having a hard time with your hip, what you can do is when you're holding your their ankle, just like Zach is right here, you can drive your hamstring into their shin and it'll mimic the same kind of pressure and you don't necessarily need to lace your foot through. Um, where When you lace your foot through is where you start getting those issues in the hip. So if you just keep it, it's basically like you're keeping a straight leg. It's, it's going to sacrifice a little bit of control, but, you know, in the longevity of things, um, saves your leg, which I would argue is more important. So you're switching... So switching here to De La Hiva, reverse De La Hiva, excuse me, same situation. You could just grab with your right arm now around his ankle. Don't be afraid to reach up and grab his head too um, and just snap him down to the ground. His base is, Dan's base is very head heavy right now but you're not doing anything to punish it so it's not like you can get away with it now you're in a situation where you, again you could throw a daily heva on the other side as well so you it just looks like to me that you don't know the the guard dan i don't know what that was but no harm no foul you're inside control <laughs> nice sack keep that knee in front good good elbow knee connection very nice good guard recovery Damn, what you could have done there, aside from just attacking the, the legs right there. Um, let's put it back. Um, actually, you kind of did it. Yeah, you stick your arm through, and but then you then you create like this downward pressure through the hip. I'm not explaining that well, but it's kind of not the best spot for it. Let me see. If it comes up again, I'll I'll, I'll show you. You guys falling off screen? No, we're still on screen. Over here. So the role we're looking at. Uh-oh. Jay, what happened? All right, we're back on these guys. So, oh, a little knee to the face. If you're gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, if you're gonna do that pass sack, you gotta, you still have that posture. Um, I would look to, if you're gonna do this, I would look to either get his foot out from underneath and get it on top of your shoulder, or bring your knees to his hips and bring his feet to his butt, because he's gonna have a lot of strength right here. It shouldn't be hard, yeah, like a little hook sweep kind of thing right there, and then solidifying down into side control. Thank you for getting back on screen. I appreciate that, Zach. I saw that. Uh, you definitely... I gotta learn how to do the buggy choke. I feel like Dan's like prime for a buggy choke right now. I think your arm's supposed to be on the other side, though, so I think you're okay. Nice um, control, Dan. Like, very good. I would keep that knee up. Let's see what you're gonna do. 
I wouldn't have given that. I would have. I would have kept that up so you can keep control of that that arm. If you're going for a mount, okay. Notice here, guys. Dan addresses the legs. It's kind of an old school version of this, but it works. It's good. Um, Dan reaches, so he opens up space. He's high up on the elbows, so the elbows can't get into to affect this. And he reaches through and grabs the knee. And pull and well pushes pulls and then pushes his knees down, so they're facing the wrong way. And then just a, a nice step over, good. Zach, you're doing really well, bud. I know I know you're getting like mounted right now, but oh, nice job. Okay, so he's on top. You obviously still need to be, be you still need to be careful of the back tick because he is behind your elbow. So my primary goal in this position would be to start looking to get my elbow back on the outside right here for Zach. And if I was Dan, definitely hunting the back right now. Um, yeah, you could look for an armbar too. I saw that little hip adjustment there. Um, but I like the, or a triangle. Yeah, if you manage to get his arm back. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Very good, Dan. I would, the, I, I think that was a good choice. Reason being, like you're you don't have a good triangle in right now, and Zach's doing a good job of not letting you improve that by putting a lot of pressure into your leg right there. So switching to the sweep was a smart move. I like that. You could have sat there and fought it, but it's always nice to get on top. Plus, you know, if this is competition, you just get six points: two for the sweep, four for the mount. And Zach's in a bad spot because I believe one of his arms is caught right now. I can't confirm that 100%, but I'm pretty sure Zach's right arm is caught. Um, in this case, I would look for triangles again from the top, which is a cool thing about a front triangle is that they can e you can easily transition to transition into mounted and rear triangles from the front triangle. There's like two different kinds of triangles or two different families. Um, and there's the front, the rear, and the mounted triangle that all go together. And then you have the side and the reverse triangle that go together. Um, so, again, attacking from this position can be very dangerous. And Americana is also a great option. Um, so it looks like that's what you're trying to do right now. Zach, for you, this is a tough position to be in. I would almost look to give up my back and try to get out in a scramble. Um, the other things you could try to do is either get both of your elbows back on the same side. Yeah, so just like that, the turtle, and then defend the back take though. Um, I would argue this is a comparable position. I mean, you're getting your back taken, but before you're in a mounted triangle situation, which is also terrible. Um, but I would, I would try to look to either get, I'm gonna let this play out. Yeah, that was the end of the round. Um, I would look to either try to get two arms uh, back above so you're like in a regular mount or better yet if you can get two arms under his legs it's very easy to just bridge and take him off at that point and for the mounted person or the or the play uh, the player that's playing mount the mounted player player the whatever if you're playing mount um, you never want to let somebody get two arms under the one arm is great. You're in the triangle position, but two arms, it's not hard for them to escape. All right, guys. Well, please, if you don't mind, drop a like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I get these episodes out every morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time now. Or was that before? Now is the standard time? I don't know. It's it's still, it's Eastern time. The, the time's just changed. But if you want to be on the show, check out the description below. I'm on the other side. Woo. And uh, we'll get you on the show. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.